and start it again here. Okay, take home exercise four. Okay. Um, so I asked you as part of take home exercise four to take a look at the scope of four different models. Four different models that all share certain characteristics. What would they share the characteristics among all of them? What was, this, what was this character about all of them? Yes, uh, name again? Oh. Alex, yes, they model like, infections. Yeah, they model the spread of infections. That's good. Um, so all modeled the spread of infection over time. And I deliberately chose them as such. But they differed in their scope. They differed in what was endogenous, what was exogenous, and what was ignored for each of them. And we're going to go through them quickly, right? The first of them was uh, a close cousin of a model we encountered in our very first day of class here. You know, uh, which you may have blotted out of your memory. <laughs> but, um, you know, it involved a, a situation where we had a spread of infection in a population that was spatially situated, right? That you had people placed in space, and people went through an, uh, a set of states here, right? From susceptible, exposed to infected to recover. So I spent a while making all these models you know, consistent, and, and those, so you wouldn't get too distracted by them and fill up the entire assignment saying that one is exposed, and that one doesn't. Okay, so here we, here we have a spread of infection. And we have different colors to denote people in different states. So red is infectious, gray is recovered, green is susceptible, and yellow is exposed. So people who are latently infected. Okay. Um, so this is this is uh, a model. Um, give me a few things that are endogenous. Infection spread model with FEIR structure. What are, what's something that's endogenous? Number of infected people. Number of infected people is an argument. That's yeah. true. Number of susceptible people, number of people who are exposed to the infection, Good. number of people who are recovered. Good. All of those are are endogenous. And in fact, they are summaries of model state. Why do I say summaries? Why do I say that's not the model state right there? F E I R. Yes, or because they, these are uh, combined together and make the model, and each of them kind of represents, and there's some that becomes the model itself. So it's a complex kind of that's why it's a, it's a summary of the model. It's a summary of the model, but let, let me ask this in another one. If I took, so if those are aspects of model state, and I'll be with you just a second, sir. Those are aspects of, if those totally define model state, if those were model state, what that would mean is if I wrote those, if I stopped this model, I'm going to stop it. Um, and I were to write down those numbers. And in fact, most of them are up, up here at the top. And I were to shut down my computer, close the program, shut it down, and come back tomorrow, plug those numbers in and run it forward. Would that, would those four numbers be enough to specify the entire state of the system? Yes. What else is there besides those four numbers? Yes. Um, Okay, yeah, so I just write, yeah, well, okay, I'm not sure. if those were the state, I'd be running it forward, so, okay, so at time zero be as if it were time, uh, bumble, um, uh, time 125.35, so I'd continue it forward from your, the idea would be, if those were the total system, I'd have to plug them in and just run it forward and, yeah, so it would say time zero, but it's still completely gone from it. If that was the entire model state, if the, uh, then then it totally defines what the change in state is going to be, and I could run it forward. But they're not the entire state. And and sir, you, you had a hand up. I couldn't have the model of the eleven that I previous explanation of the new Okay. Can I you can Can I come back to that? That would be awesome. Yeah. And your name? Uh, Rashid. Rashid. Okay, thank you, Rashid. Yeah, so if those numbers are all of model state, what's missing from those numbers? Not yet. Uh, the organization spread, 
Yeah. yeah, but the spatial structure of this, right? The spatial structure of this is absent from those four numbers. And that structure matters. Give me an example where what, I say that structure matters. I say, you know, depending on where people are, it makes sense to be different. Give me a situation. Two situations be very different in their implication, but the same four numbers. Yeah. Um, ben? Yeah. yeah. You could imagine in situations where basically the, the recovered is kind of flipped with where the infected are, so that yeah. the box of the cover and infected on the inside, such that it could never spread outside. Good. Brilliant. Brilliant. So Ben says, look, imagine if all these are covered, all these bread, but just a number, and that's all that matters. We should be able to pick. You know where they where they are. Like you know, it shouldn't matter where they are. But if we put those recovered all around here, a sort of cordon sanitaire, a sort of sanitary cordon, a, a sort of block it, then it would block from spreading, wouldn't it? Because it, it couldn't go any further. They're they're recovered. Um, as long as they're not about to change back, right? To to susceptible, it would block it. And so that would make a huge difference compared to. If the recovered were, for example, the scattered occasionally around here, um, right? Uh, if the if these recovered were scattered randomly here, and this was all mixtures of green and and yellow and so on, it was also of all very different, right? Um, so it matters where they are. The fact that these are at the periphery, that these infected ones are at the periphery, matters because it's spreading outwards in these rings. Right, and and that makes a, a huge difference. It makes a difference in a big way why we see these kind of successive waves of infection, right? Um, where it where it spreads outwards in successive successive waves. It's very much like a prairie grass fire spreading out, spreading along, burning itself out, but then. Some sparks from the outside come back and start a new a new one from the inside. That's the spatial organization here is actually really important. If you just had people in fact people anywhere in the whole space, it would look very different. It would it would much more quickly rise and fall and, and burn itself out because you wouldn't have the locality. It doesn't, it wouldn't take time to spread out. Do you see that? Okay, uh, so exogenous, uh, so endogenous thing here includes the spatial structure. Good. Um, how about exogenous then? A rate of spread of infection. That's good. That's a tool. And then name again. <laughs> yeah, the number of days people remain infected. A lot of these things, if you looked, and I, I realized that. Sort of told you, hey, peek over here. It's good modeling practice. A lot of these parameters are listed over here, but you can also see them. I reflected on the fact, and and I said, oh yeah, they're also listed here, so you can kind of see these assumptions. These are assumptions of the we're telling for the model, right? That the average duration of when people are in fact ten, but not yet in fact two, is one day. Or the duration of immunity is 90 days. No? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Arbel. Uh, I don't know the answer to one, but can you put the disease to more effectively if you have a particular infection and you put it at the end of the next one, so I'm not going to turn it back on. And if there is no way to model it, it should be done the same way. So I don't see why. That's not the answer. If you do this, that means that it's covered. What I'm saying is, when, so I'll, I'll try to approach it this way. When we ask what is the state of a model, what we're seeking is, is a characterization of its current situation complete enough that if that information provides all the information needed to determine how it will change over the next little bit, right? It's a description of the current situation um, should be complete enough. If that's the state, 
it's the state that determines the change in state. So if I have a specification of a complete state, it needs to be, you know, uh, complete enough that it will specify how state will change, at least probabilistically how it will change. And what I'm saying is spatial location here is actually really important for determining how it will change. If you have all the effectives surrounded by, directly by the cover, it's not going to spread at all. If the surround, if the effectives are surrounded entirely by susceptibles, it'll spread very quickly in the next little bit. So the the spatial context, the spatial layout of where where these individuals are actually really matters to this point. Does that make sense? There's a, 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 a handout there, so yes. I'm just wondering if the population that also fall into uh yeah, the total population. Total population is our number. Yeah, that's exactly right. Total population is exogenous. We specify. Uh, that's right. And um, so what's what's ignored? And then I'm gonna come to the to the question by receipt. What's what's ignored in this model, Tony? Uh yeah, okay. So we have we yeah, I mean I, I asked you what's ignored and I I felt actually it's a little bit of an unfair question because I'm not telling you like this is a model of COVID-19, right? Um, and probably if I had extra time, I would I would I would go and say, imagine these are models of COVID-19, but but some of them are are not appropriate for that. So anyway, um so it's a little bit of an unfair thing, but uh yeah, so for some infections, uh like that. It's an important uh, factor. What what's something else? Or what? The vaccination and uh, isolation. Okay, so so there's no uh, stimulation of vaccination as a process here. There's no certainly none of people isolated. That's the director. Percy, yeah. Risk of complications. Risk of complications. Yeah, there's no representation. People need to be hospitalized. The impact of hospitalizations on their contact habits. Right, that they're not circulating in the community, or because they're really sick, they're at home instead of going to gatherings or going going to class. Um, yeah, uh, not good. Agents movement. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, th there's move. There's movement of sorts. I'll do with you just a sec, Alex. There's movement in the model of sorts, right? These waves move, but are any agents moving? No. That's interesting. Um, there's movement, but it's not movement of an individual. There's a lot of phenomena like this in the world. You see a wave of the ocean rushing, aboard and crashing. But you'd be you'd be mistaken, understandably mistaken, for thinking like there's you know the wave is the thing bringing on water with it and crashing down. But that was different water. Like what makes up the wave is different water as it proceeds. It's a phenomenon at a higher level than the drops of water. It's not that the water is rushing towards you per se. The wave is rushing towards you, but the water is not, right? And similarly with traffic jams, actually. It turns out that there are these phenomena, traffic jams like shock waves, that there's there's no one car rushing forward, but the shock wave associated with a backup that's coming at you um, at the back as the traffic jam is forming. It's sort of the cars slow down and that leads to cars behind them slowing down and and, and 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 so that brings this impression that like oh the traffic jam is coming at you but it, it's not right it's it, no one car is coming at you it's a higher level phenomenon it's an emergent phenomenon the world is filled with these things and um uh yes alex there. Uh, i just had a question and maybe there are more clear definitions because it seems to me like anything not listed in the model is not factor. Yeah, so generally when, when we have models that are more trying to characterize some situation in the world. So I, I understand your struggle here. When we're trying to characterize some simulation in the world, often we have a sense like, okay, look, there's a lot of factors that plausibly play a role in the world. We're just leaving them out of our model. If I don't tell you what situation in the world is supposed to be characterizing. It's a hard thing to say, because you can say, well, there's no elephants in the model. And that's true, but maybe elephants weren't weren't relevant for you know the uh spread of 
cryptosporiosis in the Canadian Arctic, for example. Maybe, maybe that art, you know, elephant storm is a big part of the situation. So, where is this anything relevant but not conserved? Yeah, I would say, you know, uh, relevant in the in the situation in the world that this model is trying to characterize, but not um, not included in the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So or the for example, can you say that you say about the model that what there's, for example, the, the list that says, for example, the the infection is coming from the school or work of people working from home. I mean, those are not exactly like. Uh, I mean, good. The next problem, but it's going to show us like the, the ju our judgment, our observation, and investigation is going to help us out to actually maybe uh, mm -hmm. how this will work. I mean, it's not going to affect our okay. runs, but it will show us very stuff. I don't know. It somewhat actually changes our observation, but it doesn't well, change well, a lot. Yeah, I mean, what? So, so there might be. Yes, I mean, sometimes the phenomena we want in the model, it's not because per se it changes how it will evolve. It's because we're interested in how it evolves and we're interested in understanding why things are happening. And therefore, we want certain things in there, like a record of how many people got affected at home versus at workplace versus at school. And this model. Is it suitable for looking at workplace school who's getting infected? No, it kind of abstracts over where I infected my neighbor, right? Okay, time is fleeting, so I want to get on to the second model if we could. But, you know, this, this is a fascinating thing. I, I have to say, this is the first time I've really run this class in the format. These are discussions that are really important for practical modeling. And I, I will tell you, if I just came in here and delivered you all a lecture, um, it's easier in some ways, but it does a disservice because these issues don't get brought out. And they are issues actually that come up a lot in real, real world modeling. What to leave out, what's included, why do we need factors? Like we want to understand the situation, we want to report on it, even though it may not affect, it, affect the, uh, the outcome. Okay, so let's go now to the next model. SCIRS, crowding disparities, version 14, trying to find projected state choice. Okay, um, here we go. As as turns out, I have the model built. Okay, so this model too is a model of, uh, Wade has a hand up. Oh, thank you. Did, was I sharing it before? I, I missed when you were sharing it before. Okay, I, I stand remiss. Um, Okay, um, Okay. so ladies and gentlemen, this too, as was said earlier, is a model of infection spread in a population. And, you know, once again, colors denote people's infection status. Um, but as you could see, it looks rather different. I think in this time it actually burnt out. So let's try it uh, another time here. And we will see uh, a person starts infective and infection spreads here. And we have a depiction of the fraction of people that are infected up here and the number of people getting affected per unit time and how, mu how, how much infection of that infection is occurring. Uh, or actually, these are connection counts um, associated with uh, people in the population. And how much of it occurred in low income, that's this one, versus high income individuals. And people's location was determined by their income, it turns out. So if we looked at where people were placed, and we looked at here the population, and we saw where their X and Y location was determined, their X location, how far they over in the X direction depended on their income. Okay. So who are these people over here on the left? Can anyone say based on that, if their if their X location, and I'll do a larger population here, if their X location indicates their income, who are those people on the left hand side there? Low income people. And do you notice anything else about them? They're much more connected. They're much more, we could use the term crowded, right? And what do you think that leads to in terms of infection risk? Artelan. 
Yeah, the speed, the chance that they will get infected. And you can see in a model where it's a larger population, we're tracking here how many people of each type got infected. And once again, you can see, you know, high income. Uh, there are people getting affected a number of times. Low income, it tends to be larger. There's quite a few high income that never get infected because they're off here in their enclaves way over to the right. You can't really see them, but if we zoomed out, we could see, oh yeah, like these folks will never be infected. Why won't they be infected? Okay. They're not connected with anyone. And so they're like an island, right? Um, okay, so, so this is a little model. Uh, we had people once again going in an SCIR. Um, and uh, once again, if you go went and looked at Maine and were to, to poke around, you could find a bunch of parameters. Okay, so what are some things that are endogenous in this model that is general? Yes, repeat. Yeah, it's an encased count. The count of people getting infected over time. Good. Good for staying a given day. What's something else? Fractional. Sorry? Uh, fractional prevalence. Yeah, fractional prevalence. Number of people that are infected. These are summaries of state. So that's, or, or, or summaries of change of state. Um. So, uh, Matthias. Okay, yeah. So, so it generates in, infection rates. In fact, different infection rates. You know, in people who are low income or high income, right? Um, Arlen. Uh, uh, yes. So the top population, I think, the population itself can be higher or lower. They are making it so according to these models that we have. Started. Okay. So, so, so population. That's true. Like we have a. A large population scenario uh, uh, <clears throat> of a thousand, and then we have a small one of two hundred fifty. So, what sort of parameter? What sort of thing is that? Is it endogenous or exogenous? I think it's exogenous because. And you are correct. Yes. Um, but I had a question. So, income variable is trying to understand the model. They mentioned the income. I yes. Have the money, money for an income, but that people who are injured. Than this or that kind of spot. I didn't quite understand what the income because when I was here, income it, was like, it really didn't have anything that really was kind of in, in getting meaning to me as income as money or income as people who are entering the population. Oh, yeah, sorry. I know income here is meaning their earnings, something like their earnings per unit time. So, like their earnings per year or per, per day. It's sort of how much money they have coming into them on a per unit time basis okay yeah yeah um good good question um okay so so what things are and any other things that are endogenous here yes ben specific distribution of the people have mentioned with them as yeah so 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 it it gives rise so it it imposes some initial population where we have, you know, some number of people here who are, um, so so we have, for example, among low income population, a different distribution in the uh, number of connections that they have versus uh, high income. It, it goes and wires it up at the initial time. And you could see among high income people, they have, some of them have a lot of connections. Well, what the, this is a histogram. I want you to be able to read these. So um, there are some high income people that have as many as how many connections, roughly? Sorry? Uh, well, that's on average. That's the average number. But there are some that have how many? Do you know how to read this? So this is giving sort of like a distribution, right? It's saying, of the high people, what fraction of them fall into to have this many connections, or that many connections, or 40 connections, or 20 connections, or 60 connections? So there are some that have as high as one. Yeah, almost, yeah, 76 or something like that. You know, it depends a little bit whether it goes into the right of it and blah, blah, blah. Um, some have, what's the fewest number of connections some of those people have? Zero. There's actually, it's a zero heavy distribution. That's actually, some people, this, 
the plurality, the large single largest number, the mode of this distribution is what? How many connections? Zero. Got that. Um, it's zero connections, okay? But low income, they're way up here. They're and and is this higher or lower mean? Higher. A little higher or a lot higher? A lot higher. A lot higher. Yeah, yeah. So it's like over three times the size, right? Um and uh and uh there's are, are many of these have zero connections? No, none of them have zero connections, right? They're all connected. So you could no. Ben was was highlighting this as a feature of the model, and and this is a little bit arguable. You could say, is this imposed? Is this exogenous or is it endogenous? And there could be a bit of a fight. In fact, in my head right now, there's a fight going on, okay? Um, because there's a case to be made, it's endogenous, that look, the model generates these things. I didn't tell it to put this in use, and it generated it. If this came about because I wired people up, people's location, they were wired up to people. Near Oh, oh, sorry, folks. There was some sort of campus connectivity issue, apparently. I'm not sure when this dropped out. When did it, when did it conk out? Anyone? Uh, it exactly a few seconds. But he didn't miss it. Okay, yeah. So what I was saying is that, look, you can argue that these distributions up here, these empirical distrib these distributions and, and the model um, uh, outcomes for connection counts, you could argue that they're, that they're endogenous because these come about through a rather derived process. We have people, the people different income, their location is determined by their income, then they're wired up to neighbors based on two people, A and B are connected if they lie within a certain distance of each other. That induces among lower income people who have more, and, and that most people are, are in that area, they have lots of connections uh, that, because they're located based on their income, and that induces a high number of connections. So, so there's a case that that's endogenous, that is generated by the model, but it's not endogenous because of emergent behavior over time. It's just, it's like drawing from a distribution and imposing some relationships on the result. It's, it's, a, it's a somewhat complicated process. You know, you, you pick their income and then pick their location based on their income, and you pick their connection based on their location, and that, and then you summarize in terms of the count. But there's no time there. There's no generation over time. You could say, well, it's a higher level pattern induced by, you know, some combination of functions applied to kind of um, draw some distributions. And I would say, yeah. So it's that's arguable, and certainly. The fact of where they're, you know, that income determines where they are visually with a certain relationship. There's some endogenous components there. On the other hand, um, yeah, so, so you could say, yeah, it's, it's not really endogenous in the same sense. And and I think it's a borderline case. You, you could, I would say, by a dynamical systems perspective, it's not dynamically endogenous. We're not generating it over time. It's a feature of the initial uh, state of the model that is dictated by some statistical patterns, which are rather, you know, uh, induced. How about this thing up here? How about the number of times people have gotten infected by income? Here's low income, or sorry, high income. Look at their distribution. This is their histogram versus high income, no, sorry, low income. This is high income. What's the mode of the number of times they've been infected? Zero, that's the single most common value, right? And then there's a second, there's a second mode of it. Uh, there's a second, there's a second um, modal, it's a bimodal distribution of two modes, different, different use of the word mode. 
and the single most common value in this upper one is six, right? How about for low income people? How many times have they been infected on average? Yeah, it's like higher and, and also it goes, it, there's there's more to the, you can see it's kind of skewed to the right. How many of them had zero infections? None, I mean, they've all gotten infected, right? So is this endogenous or exogenous? Endogenous, this is generated from the model over time through a combination of a bunch of factors. How about this relationship between their income and their personal infection count? So, Excess versus income per month, uh -huh. um, ideally per week or something. Um, and and why is the number of infected times have been affected? Is this endogenous or exogenous? Endogenous. Yes, receive the number. Yes. Yes. Is it yes. and or So yes. Can you can you say that the can be based on the scope of the, the model? I think that um the, if you if you could just can you go Yeah, I mean I would view it as a matter of the definition of what is meant by endogenous here. Um if if what you're saying is and not just means it is generated by the model. It doesn't matter if it's generated over time. It's, it's, it's generated by the model mechanism. So I didn't tell it that. Instead, it generated it and told me that. And I don't care if it's produced over time or if it's the initial time. If you said that, then I'd say, yeah, that distribution for how many neighbors people have by and the differences by income is endogenous. But I think that's a kind of low bar. I, I don't like that, actually. I think it's very, um, I think it's a little bit too narrow. And I, I'd like to say, is it dynamically endogenous? Is it given rise to by behavior of the model over time? And the answer is no. So I, I, I guess I'd say both are useful definitions. I wouldn't want to only use the first definition. I'd want to have recourse to this notion of dynamically exogenous or endogenous, but but it it's really a matter of definition. And you know, it's interesting. Richard Feynman. Anyone here heard the name Richard Feynman? Yeah. So who's Richard Feynman? Anyone think? Yeah, he's a famous physicist. I used his computer a bit much field. Um but um yeah, to be less like that. Um <laughs> not because I was there, by the way. Um anyway, uh, so uh, Richard Feynman um, said when his father was young, he took him aside, and he said, you know, if you look at all the fighting in the world, a lot of it's just about labels. Um, he said, you know, 90% of the world's problems are just about, are just fighting about labels, whether they call it tomato or they call it tomato, potato, potato, potato. He said, like, don't get involved in those things. Don't get involved in just, you know, is this the right way to call it or that way? Or is this definition the best one or that one? He said, don't get involved in those. And Richard Feynman went through life. And he, he wrote, surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman, the, the, the famous uh, memoir. Um, and he says in there that, you know, by the time he had gotten older in life, reached his 60s or whatever, he realized that with due respect to his father, his father was off there. His father, I'm sorry, but his father was incorrect that 90% of the world's uh, arguments are about labels. He said, actually, it's more like 98%. <laughs> he said, yeah, take your father's advice. Don't get involved in that stuff because a rose by any other name that smells just as you know, Get to the substance of the matter, not you know, fighting about the particular words uh, by which we, we name something. So um, exogenous, uh, I would just say, let's just say what's dynamically exogenous from loosely exogenous. And it turns out that with emergence, there's people talk about weak emergence and strong emergence, which are somewhat different. So I, that's just my personal perspective on it. But is this a, a dynamically endogenous feature or exogenous? 
is to draw into the scale. Like this is generated by the model. We didn't in any way tell the model certain things that it just, you know, calculated the self directly. It's the result of this evolution over time that as people's income goes up, because of where they can be located, the number of neighbors, they tend to have more, but they tend to have fewer. Fewer infection codes. Okay, time is is running down here. Um, so, what are some exogenous things for this model? Contact rate and duration of latent infection, right? Uh, how long they stay immune, all those sort of things. Again, okay, great. Let's go to the third one. Contact venues. This is uh, uh, the the rightful pride of our TA. Um, actually, this is, Wade. Wade would. This is like something he does before breakfast, probably. But um, uh, so so we're gonna go grab that model. So uh, you could tell me about that model. It's it involves contact venues, uh, mobility and contact venues, right? Um, what can you talk with me about? Um, oh no, where? Where is it? Uh oh, uh oh, now I'm in trouble. All the way to the bottom. Okay, okay. Oh, here we are. Okay, thank you. Okay, so here we have a model which um, uh, we have a environment with persons, places, schools, workplaces, homes, and community places. And uh, once again, the state chart is a little bit more involved with respect to infection. Um, but it has this broad SEIR type uh, characterization. And we place people in these different venues and they engage in mobility amongst the different venues. Um, so during the day, they tend to be at work or school and then they they uh, can go to community places and then go, go home. And um, although Wade's aesthetics probably repelled him, I asked him to make the size of each of these locations depend on the number of people in it. And so you see the pulsing, the pulsing energy of that figure, right? Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what is, what are some things that are endogenous in this model? What are, what are some things, I, I, I probably should have shown you. Okay, up here you see, Number of infected over time and asymptomatic, symptomatic, number of new infections over time. And then a, a count of the number of exposures. Is this number of infected or exposures? I believe it's the number of exposures that have occurred in different environments, which is probably proportional to the number of infected. Um, uh, okay, so what, what are some things here that are endogenous? Exposures, okay, yeah. So, so, and particular exposures in, yeah, yes. particular venues, right? Um, so that's good. What else is endogenous? Sorry. Yeah, number of infections. Yeah, good. Others. Count of people susceptible exposed at a good time. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely endogenous, Matthias. Yes, there's some randomness. That's true. There's there's actually, um, it's uh, it's a matter as as befits Wade, uh, of some finesse. Um, so there's actually a schedule, and there's a schedule by which during the day their schedule is set, just like yours is. Um, I can't say this says like go to engineering two fifty two B fifty three here, but. There's different times of the day and they go to different places and there's a determination somewhere in here about where they go to, um, to for a community-based gathering, et cetera. They pick a random community location where they go to the same home and school or one place. So ladies and gentlemen, what, what else is uh, endogenous? Yeah. Yes, repeat. Uh, you must have detection, so that's what the first is, right? Um, but going to Matthew's comment, their movement in space, how much time 
they're spending at different places. You know, uh, to some degree, their schedule is set, but but they get exposure as a result of the model running over time within this context, right? The fact that they are exposed at the school or at home to different subsets of people, right? So what are some things that are that are uh, exogenous for this model? Anyone? Where would I look at that? Yeah, the parameters, the assumptions about things. And in fact, per Matthias's comment, you know, the, the very imposed specification that after work, they go to community, some community place, you know, or they go with a certain probability distribution to these different places. Um, those things are imposed and then they go home, right? Um, or with certain probability distributions. So, so those transitions, there's some aspects of this that um, have assumptions. Um, so that's uh, that's good. What things are ignored in this model? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, the mutation of the virus, different uh, variants, yeah. I think what did they? Uh, uh, Francis, what is it? Um, holidays, yeah. So like uh, weekends, holidays, days where they have a diverse schedule area. Yeah. You know. Sorry? Immigration, yeah, there's no people coming in, right? So it's not even births going on, and Rashid? Kind of similar with the building of new houses. Yeah, so there's no change in the house, the housing market, okay? People don't move houses, right? Hard a lot. Yeah. <laughs> there is no one who died out of the infection. Yeah, there's no no one no one dying. So those are all you know plausible things that might come in in a real pandemic. Could you imagine that? A real pandemic? Um set a stroke in my beard, I'll pull my mask. Um yeah, so um so these are plausibly things. So these have different, these models have different scopes. Um, we didn't finish all of them. Um, I think that time I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this issue of intervention, like which, what things could you do with one versus the other? Maybe I'll just say, like this latest one, if you want to look at school, it's active school closure, or you want to have work from home work, right? You want to evaluate the effects of uh, asking people in workplaces to mask up or something like that. That model would be quite effective. That first model would be hopeless for that, right? <laughs> There's no there there, uh, and and even the model with like income and so it's not going to capture which of those interactions and that network occur at home or workplace, and they're from not on effect, right? You ask people not to go to school, they spend more time at home when people at home. They might spread it more at home. So, um, the model with income, well, gosh, if you wanted to look at initiatives to lower crowding in lower income groups and in social housing, you know, and how it impacts spread, that might be a, a, a better vehicle than the later one, actually, or at least it would be a run for the money with some of the impacts on, on income, right? Um, uh, if we wanted to examine some of the effects with, uh, with uh with respect to this issue of kind of um people moving between cities the fourth model i asked you to look at where they move between cities if we want to reason about people bringing infection with them from set to new pa or you know as they move from wuhan china to to shanghai or to beijing or what have you across the the, the landscape fleeing the outbreak that last model will get us closer to where we need to be thinking. Models have scopes. The scopes determine what we can use them for, the types of questions we might be able to use to answer them. But all models, like all maps, are wrong, but they can be useful for certain needs. And they're useful because they omit certain details. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for coming to class on this bitterly whole day. And uh, I'll ask you to watch your video for next time, okay? Thank you.